Hey you guys, I wanted to bring you back really quick because Marcus and I have been talking a little bit and you know, when, when I was growing up, my grandmother always told me, if you can learn from a master, you better start learning and always look for people that really know a lot and they can educate you, but educate you in a way that you can understand. And so we were starting to talk about this awesome mountain bike and Marcus started to teach us some stuff and I thought, you know what, everybody out there needs to learn the same time as I am learning. So I'm gonna have Marcus explain it to us all. He's gonna talk really loud so you guys can hear it all. But walk us through this bike and how we can understand the technology that we're looking at. Just talk about the basics. Just okay. imagine you would have a car and your front wheels would suspend in this way and your rear wheels suspend in a curve. Would you okay. think it would work? No. Yeah, because the obstacle you had in the front would work properly and in the rear it couldn't work because your rear wheel would go into a curve. Right. This is actually what most of the dual suspension bikes in the world do. They have a main pivot and then the rear wheel still goes in a curve. Right. So when the obstacle hits it, basically it turns this way, so that doesn't work in the right direction. So a perfect system is if you have a virtual pivot point, so your pivot point is shifting, and if your front fork and your rear wheel is traveling in the same direction. So this is what we have here. Okay. We have four different things you need to eliminate on a full suspension bike. And I'd like to explain it with the car. If you start to accelerate your car, your motor hood gets up. Yep. If you brake, what does it do? It dives. So it's exactly the same thing on a bike. One is called anti-skip and the other one is called anti-dive. Okay. So if you have a system, you need to check what does it do to your driving shaft. In this case, it is the crank arms. Okay. This is something everybody could try with his own full suspension. Okay. If your shock is set too hard, just lower some air. Okay. Put it into the lightest gear. If it's a triple chain ring, even one lower, doesn't matter. Okay. And you just check if your uh, crank arms are standing at a position which you see, so let's say here. Yep. And then look if you are suspending, if the crank arm is moving or if it stays in the position. Okay. A lot of bikes, the crank arm is moving backward. So which means by the time it suspends, you always have to push your own body weight out of the suspension. No go. This means loss in energy. Absolutely. The, the, same, the same thing happens if you are, and now I need to shift it back down to the higher gear. Just a second. Okay. Now, a lot of bikes have a way too hard setup on the shock. Okay. If we look at obstacles which you have in your way, it, your rear wheel could go inside and it could go outside. Could be a hole or could be a tree or a stone. What you want is that your wheel is always holding contact to the ground. Right. If the wheel is in the air, you can't brake and you can't get driving traction. force, traction. Yep. So basically, you need to have a system which is very smooth, so when it breaks loose, but it should not lose any energy. So if we look at this bike now, you see it's very soft setup. Yep. So very soft setup. But Let's have a control. We move the ring on the shock up. Okay. And I stand now with my full body weight even far away to the front. And just look how much it moves. Look here. Yeah, hardly moved at all. Yeah. Some suspension bikes have a lockout in their, in their system because they are explaining that you should lock out your bike while you're driving on the street or you're climbing. That's where I want to have traction if I'm uh, off-road and I have, you know, the holes and the obstacles. That's where I want it. There is no other land vehicle where you can lock the shock. It's, it's, it's not needed. And those are things, if you look at a bike, look how the system works. And okay, not so what let me ask you this. When I'm sitting here, though, climbing, right? And I'm climbing up a hill, does it put me on enough angle that it'll hold that shock? Or do I have to be standing forward actually no. climbing? You sit and it's so soft that it really takes away all obstacles which are in because you have a 30% negative sag. So your rear wheel is able to get into the hole yeah. or if it's the obstacle it could go inside the damping. And the benefit is you have more control. 
and more control I agree, but when you're climbing though, like let's say you're on a real hard climb and you yeah. want to get all your energy to the ground, right? Not losing into the shock. Yes. What you just did there by stand forward would actually stiffen the bike, right? So that yeah. it is going to be able to do that exactly. and keep your climbing. Exactly. Well, if my weight's further back into here, right, because I'm sitting on the climb, is it going to give me a suspension sag or is it going to give me the stiffness? It gives you both. Okay. Because your rear wheel is eliminated from your driving side. Gotcha. Because if you have a one point where you pedal and your chain is pulling forward, right. then you have one main pivot. Right. With the virtual pivot point, it is separated because your rear wheel travels in a different direction. So you're always getting... You, you, you have this soft feeling and keeping the control, but without losing energy on it. And is this, do you classify this as an endurance bike? It's a new category. <laughs> We're open to new categories. Yeah. Because a cross-country bike and an endurance bike, the most of the bikes never use the treble. Right. So, because the system is way too hard and the shock, too much air in it. So, if you really control how much treble the most people use, they use 70-60% out of their treble because they use too much air in the shock. Here, you use the full span of the bike, which is 120 millimeter rear treble and 100 front. It rides like a cross-country, but it gives you the feeling of an all out so you would race this cross country? Of course. And the weight, it is super, super light. It's below 10 kilograms. Okay, so if you have any questions about this bike, make sure you make comments below. Uh, we'll give the link to these guys so they can answer any of your questions. Thanks for watching this, and uh, let's see what this bike does. We'll be talking to you soon.